Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Spring Convocation 2019, the first series of convocation ceremonies to be held in the new Merlis Belcher Place. We acknowledge the traditional territory of Treaty 6 and the homeland of the Métis on which we have gathered for this event. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. Please stand as you are able for the honour song and the arrival of the Chancellor's Platform Party and our graduates.
Thank you to our drum group, Buffalo Boy Productions, for performing today's honor song. Would you please remain... <laughs> Would you please remain standing as we join one of our students, Kate Nachalobe, in the singing of O Canada. Would you please be seated? Once again, graduates and distinguished guests, welcome. I am Beth Bilson. I'm the university secretary, and I now have the honor of introducing you to the members of the platform party you see before you. So beginning with the front row on my left, Russ Isinger, university registrar, Patty McDougall, Vice Provost Teaching, Learning, and Student Experience. Karen Chad, Vice President Research. Deborah Posega Osborne, Vice President University Relations. Gordon Barnhart, Past President. Roland Duquette, Elder. Tony Vanelli, Provost and Vice President Academic. President Peter Stoichev. Chancellor Roy Romano. Louise Half, today's honorary degree recipient. Candace Wasake Slafferty, presenting the honorary degree recipient. Jane Alcorn, Dean College of Pharmacy and Nutrition. Chad London, Dean College of Kinesiology. Preston Smith, Dean College of Medicine. Martha Smith, Associate Dean, Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies. And in the second row are orators, Zahida Irene, Jennifer Martin, Terry Bedard. From the Senate, Anne Doig and Richard Michalenko. Merlis Belcher, past honorary degree recipient, and you may have noticed his name on the building when you came in. <laughs> Grit McCreeth, honorary ambassador. Jamie Bell, Vice President, Operations and Finance, University of Saskatchewan Students' Union. Mohammed Wadzi Alam, Vice President, External, Graduate Students Association. Tom Wilson, University of Saskatchewan Retirees Association. Kent Kowalski, Associate Dean Academic, College of Kinesiology. Kent Stobart, Vice Dean Education, College of Medicine. Patricia Blakely, Associate Dean, Undergraduate Medical Education, College of Medicine. Yvonne Shevchuk, Associate Dean, Academic, College of Pharmacy and Nutrition. And behind them, and I would ask them to stand, members of the faculty of the University of Saskatchewan. Would you please join me in expressing to all of these faculty, administration, and members of our governing bodies 
our thanks for the work they have done by supporting, teaching, and encouraging our graduates. I'd like to call forward Peter Stoichev, the president of the University of Saskatchewan. Thank you very much, Beth, and good morning, everyone. This is such a special occasion. We're delighted that there are so many people here able to join us. We've had convocation for 50 years off of campus, and this marks the first time that we are able to bring it back to campus. And the reason we're able to do that is because we have this venue. Convocation Hall itself, of course, was designed for a much smaller cohort of graduating students, and 50 years ago we outgrew it. We couldn't bring it back to campus because we didn't have a venue that could accommodate the numbers of students who now graduate from the University of Saskatchewan until Merlis Belcher had the vision to build this particular venue, which is not only, although it's important that it is, a multi-purpose sports facility. His vision was also that it be a community venue where we could gather for a number of different purposes. And there isn't anything more community-oriented that we do at the University of Saskatchewan than have convocation. So please join me in thanking Merlis Belcher for the transformative gift for this building. Eminent Chancellor, graduates and families, honored guests, I thank the many people who are here today to be part of this moment in this great university's history. In particular, I want to acknowledge today's elder Roland Duquette here for every one of our eight convocation ceremonies in honor of us, in honor of you all. And because of his belief in the importance of this university and its work, the Buffalo Boys Drum Group, honorary degree recipient Louise Half, my predecessor Gordon Barnhart, Grit McCreeth, who is our honorary ambassador, just received the Saskatchewan Order of Merit a couple of days ago and will become our chancellor in the fall. I also acknowledge the many faculty on the stage who are the core of this university. They have been leaders and mentors for so many of you who will graduate today. We're here to celebrate a milestone in the lives of the graduates who will soon cross this stage. We're also here because this university has brought us together. A university is a wonderful thing, crucial to the ongoing conversation we call democracy. We are so fortunate to be in Canada and to have the freedoms that we have. Given the world we're in now, where it is difficult to separate out what's true and what's not true, where our future depends on knowledge and the correct use of it, where research holds the key to our greatest challenges, where free speech and informed speech are crucial to our humanity, universities are needed more than they have ever been, and the University of Saskatchewan is needed more than it has ever been. People with degrees in medicine, pharmacy and nutrition, kinesiology and rehabilitation science, such as all of you, are needed more than they have ever been. Strengthened with a University of Saskatchewan degree that you all worked so hard to achieve, what all of you crossing this stage today go on to do in your lives will matter immensely to our collective future. And many others helped you to get to this point, so take the time to thank your spouses and partners, parents and grandparents, friends, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, communities, elementary school teachers, high school teachers, the professors you appreciated or the classmates who helped you out, because you don't achieve something this big without a lot of help along the way. Many graduates across the country are sitting in seats like you are right now in venues similar to this one, getting their university degrees. But I want to tell you 
that there is something special, unique, about a University of Saskatchewan degree. And it's because at this university, we govern ourselves not just on the basis of what we want to be, but what the world needs us to be. The world needs thoughtful, educated, and humane leaders. And some of the country's most formative holders of high office got their degrees here. Among them are Prime Minister John Diefenbaker, who graduated with his University of Saskatchewan Law degree exactly 100 years ago, who eventually became Prime Minister and after that, our Chancellor. Governor General Ray Natitian, Premiers such as Scott Moe and our Chancellor Roy Romano, nine Canadian Premiers have now been students at the University of Saskatchewan. Many Lieutenant Governors of Saskatchewan, including our current one, Tom Malloy, a former U of S Chancellor, and of other provinces as well. Many Canadian Ambassadors to countries around the world, dozens of high-ranking public servants in Ottawa, such as Gordon Thiessen, former Governor of the Bank of Canada, Indigenous leaders, such as former Canadian Ambassador to many countries, and senior advisor to the TRC, Deborah Chatsis. The world needs groundbreaking researchers who change how we understand the world we live in, and people who went on to receive Nobel Prizes were here. One was chemistry graduate student Henry Talbay, who received the Nobel Prize in 1983. Another Nobel laureate from the University of Saskatchewan was Gerhard Hertzberg, who was offered a position in physics here in 1935 by our first president, Walter Murray, to escape Nazi Germany when no other university on this continent had the vision or the humanity to offer him one. Hertzberg won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1971, Canada's first scientific Nobel. The world needs cures for cancer and so many other diseases. And we are the home of the cobalt-60 radiation therapy that revolutionized cancer therapy treatment in 1951 and saved the lives of millions of cancer patients around the world. The small Acme Machine and Electric Company on Idlewild Drive built the casing for that machine. U of S medical researchers built the concept for it. Many thousands of patients were treated here over the next 20 years until it was replaced with newer technology in 1971. Sylvia Fedoric, who later became Saskatchewan's first female Lieutenant Governor, and after that our Chancellor, was a graduate student member of the project's team. Significant cancer research continues at this university, building on that world-famous history, along with research in many other fields in the health sciences. The world needs great writers, and writers such as Sharon Butella, who wrote Perfection of the Morning, and three-time Governor General's award winner Guy Vanderhaeg were here. It needs great artists, too. And there's hardly a visual artist, musician, or theater professional in this province who hasn't had some close connection with the University of Saskatchewan. The world needs open-minded, well-educated, courageous and compassionate members of the justice sector, and we have graduated many. Supreme Court Justice Emmett Hall was a student here, a law school classmate of John Diefenbaker's. Justice Hall's report for the 1964 Royal Commission on National Health Care Services recommended that Canada adopt Saskatchewan's public health insurance model. In it, he wrote, and I love the phrase, that the only thing more expensive than good health care is no health care. Emmett Hall later became Chancellor of the University of Saskatchewan. Roy Romano, another law school alumnus and now our Chancellor, authored in 2002 the only other Royal Commission on the Future of Health Care in Canada report. These reports aren't randomly connected to our great university. We have our many health sciences colleges because of the strong history of public health care in this province. The work that Romano and Hall did in this regard isn't only an example of justice in action, it's an example of social justice in action. And please join me in thanking Roy Romano for serving as our Chancellor for these last three years. 
This is his last series of convocation ceremonies in his role, and we have been so proud to have him a true nation builder as our chancellor. The world needs great athletes and coaches, and Olympian Sandra Schmerler, track athlete Diane jones Konahowski, NHL coaches Mike Babcock and Dave King were at the U of S. In fact, three of the NHL's current head coaches were student athletes here with Huskies Hockey. That history of excellence is why we were able to fund and build Merlis Belcher Place. People want to support real excellence. The world needs peace, sometimes hard fought. And just over 100 years after the end of the First World War and on the very day of the 75th anniversary of the Normandy invasion, I am also reminded of the thousands of U of S students, faculty, and staff who enlisted in the two world wars. Those hundreds who sacrificed themselves in the line of duty, including the 200 U of S students killed in the Second World War from the 2,500 who enlisted, are commemorated on the university's memorial gates on College Drive, the Memorial Union Building, and the Peter McKinnon Building. The university gave so many brave soldiers to the First World War cause that the College of Education, College of Engineering, closed its doors for the 1916-1917 academic year when all of its faculty staff and students enlisted. More U of S soldiers were killed in that war than graduated from here in 1918. These are examples of what I mean when I say that we're the university the world needs. Now in our second century, enjoying a time of peace here secured by those who went before us and by the accomplishments of our alumni and faculty, we are seen as a research leader in the country with Canada's only synchrotron, where we pioneered how to produce medical isotopes without using a nuclear reactor. There is a huge demand for these isotopes due to the closure of Chalk River just over a year ago. And our cyclotron is now providing medical isotopes to Royal University Hospital, a fitting homage to that Cobalt 60 work done here over half a century ago. The world needs to provide food to its rapidly growing population. In order to meet the world's food needs, agricultural productivity essentially needs to double. Our Global Institute for Food Security is helping do just that, enabled by great work done at the University of Saskatchewan over many decades, including by our Crop Development Centre, whose work helped reduce the amount of farmland under summer fallow from almost 50% in 1970 to a fraction of 1% today. The economic impact for the province in this University of Saskatchewan area of research alone is in the neighbourhood of $40 billion. We now add to that economic impact in many ways. The world needs to understand the reasons for droughts and floods to safeguard our communities against tragedies such as the many just this year in Canada. Our Global Institute for Water Security, the largest university-led research centre of its kind in the world, ranked number one in Canada, is doing just that. These institutes of water security and food security are also examples of how we bring together different parts of the university to work on global problems, with 17 colleges, including medicine, pharmacy and nutrition, and kinesiology. We have more than any other Canadian university of our size. This is a crucial feature of who we are, because although we do not know what the solutions are to the major challenges facing us today, we do know this, that none of them will be solved by a single discipline or a single person, but by many people from many disciplines working together. We are poised to help do just that with faculty like the ones on the stage before you who are at the cutting edge of research, scholarly and artistic work. All of these things matter. They demonstrate why we're one of the top 15 research intensive universities in this country and why the University of Saskatchewan leads all of Canada's 96 universities 
when it comes to the per capita economic impact on the surrounding region, leads them all. They demonstrate how we help make our province, Canada, and the world a better place. Saskatoon, too. Great cities need and great cities deserve great universities. A strong relationship between the two is crucial, and we're fortunate to have one with the city of Saskatoon. A formal partnership that was the first of its kind in Canada between a major university and the city that it's in when we signed it two years ago. I say all of this to emphasize that the University of Saskatchewan degree you have worked so hard to receive today has tremendous value. Many employers tell me that when they see an application from a University of Saskatchewan graduate, it gets special attention because the quality of the university is so high and because of its graduates' work ethic that's part of our prairie roots. And also, because you haven't just learned one particular area of study, you've learned how to transfer what you've learned in one discipline to what is needed in another. You've learned about excellence, and excellence is a transferable skill. Why does that matter? Because we will all need to be able to solve problems we can't even imagine today. Saskatchewan's future will depend on it. The world's future is going to depend on it. It will depend upon educated people like you and on the impact that each of you is going to have. 44% of the available jobs in this province require the skills and knowledge that a university education provides, but only 25% of Saskatchewan's workforce has a university education. This underscores the critical importance of investing in higher education and the fact that we are a crucial part of the province's future success. This university is a leader in helping Saskatchewan stay ahead of the innovation curve. Without the kind of research and teaching that is conducted in medicine, kinesiology, pharmacy and nutrition and rehabilitation science, there is no innovation. And without innovation, there is a diminished future. So now, more than ever before, we all need people with degrees like yours in medicine, kinesiology, pharmacy and nutrition, and rehabilitation sciences from a university like yours to help build a more sustainable world, a more equitable world, a world with the courage to embrace diversity. And I am proud that we now have students from well over 100 countries attending this university. And many of those countries are represented by graduates here today. The world also needs us to be a country that responds to the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission because, as its chair, Senator Murray Sinclair, stated at the U of S, education is the key to reconciliation. I am grateful that the U of S is seen in this country as a participant, not as a bystander, in building reconciliation. And the colleges you are graduating from today have played large roles in this. We now have more Indigenous students at our university than ever before in our history. We are at a time when the country faces the greatest cultural challenge and the greatest opportunity in its history. Being the university the world needs today means committing to reconciliation, not to supplant traditional Western understanding, but to enrich it, acknowledge thousands of years of deep learning that occurred here long prior to it, and give all students a more informed and ultimately more compassionate understanding of the world. Achieving this will take a strategic mixture of patience and impatience, and it's going to take time. But as our first president, Walter Murray, wrote to a friend in 1908, when he was traveling here to begin his work as our first president, we are building for centuries. So go out from here to contribute to your community, to this province, to this country. Be a person the world needs in your own right. This university is a radical experiment in human culture, a place where we learn to be humble servants of a democratic society and respectful critics of it. 
where we can be building for centuries, for seven generations. The Roy Romanos, John Diefenbakers, Gerhard Hertzberg, Sharon Butellas, Emmett Halls, Sylvia Fedorix of the world didn't know while at university exactly where they were headed, but they knew to listen for a passion to follow, and that became an endless journey. Your journey will be unique to you. It doesn't matter exactly what it is, but be passionate about it and become passionate about it and use it for good. Congratulations to all the graduates who are about to cross the stage today and make the world a better place for all of us. Thank you. as well. It's absolutely my honour to be here today. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, I present to you Louise Half. <clears throat> Louise Half, sky dancer, is a Cree poet and writer, elder and teacher. Born in Two Hills, Alberta, she attended Indian residential school as a child and has drawn on this experience to explore resilience, uh, reconciliation, and the legacy of colonialism in her poetry. Her volumes of poetry have received numerous literary awards and she served for three years as Saskatchewan's Poet Laureate, a position which allowed her to mentor young poets and writers. She was the first Indigenous poet to have her work included in a standard Canadian poetry anthology in 2001. And now, according to one of her nominators, it would be absolutely unthinkable for her work not to be included in the general anthology of Indigenous writing in Canada. Ms. Half has participated as a speaker, a reader at numerous conferences, workshops, and literary, literary festivals in Canada and around the world. She is an elder and an advisor and an indigenous, on Indigenous cultures and traditions here at the campus at the Gordon Oaks Red Bear Student Centre. At this university and, and this role, she's able to provide advice, encouragement to the growing number of Indigenous, and I will also include staff and faculty on this campus. Throughout her career, Ms. Half has dedicated herself to assisting advocating for the vulnerable in our community. In her work on the issues of mental health, addictions, violence against women and children, and has used her wide knowledge of Indigenous traditions and teachings to bring messages of confidence and healing to all those she encounters. In 2018, a selection of her poems was released entitled Sokehita. Miss Half has said that this term could be understood to mean have courage, be brave, be strong. One of her nominators has said that this characterizes her writing enterprise and sh the sharing of healing work beyond that writing. Eminent Chancellor, I present to you Louise Half, and I ask that you confer on her the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. I have to give you a By virtue of the authority vested in me by the legislature of the province and with the consent of the Senate of this university, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa and invest you with all the powers, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto.
I need to gather myself. I said I wouldn't cry. Kita tam skat na wa ga kio. E pesi to skoya u mons anuts ga gisaga. E mat suna semina ya we go ya. E ko ye he mina. E pe wa pat ma ho ma ni o gisaga. E ko e mi wei taman metune. <clears throat> Greetings to all of you, to all the dignitaries, to Roy Romano, to uh, President Peter Stoichev. Thank you, Candace, and thank you, Elder. I really appreciate the gesture of this honor. I thank all my relatives for being here invited guests and honored graduates. I'm so honored to be with you. <clears throat> I have always wanted an audience this, this big as a poet. <laughs> but people hear the word poet and their eyes go to heaven and never come back. <clears throat> so I want to start off with a short poet poem and it is because it honors all of the people that have walked before us and to all of our parents whose footsteps we follow and who we try to emanate their goodness and their kindness. And this is for my daughter who is here today. For Omiyasu. I lift my wrist, suck out marrow, blow into my daughter. I spoon the spill into her lips. I lift my mother's finger and add Nukum's ashes and stir. My daughter dances, a leaf twirling on the wind. She blows the baritone, a gosling calling Giwetno. She delivers dry meat and croissants to my nukumak. She's a rainbow, the giveaway feast of our blood she bleeds. I also wanted to thank Dr. June Anderson for nominating me and for all the references that she provided to see this through. I am so deeply honored. For weeks, I've been looking at a photograph of my smiling three-year-old eldest grandson. My leg is propped on a chair. His moccasin foot, too, is propped on a kitchen table. We are kneading bread, bread dough, and he's covered in flour. My grandson is now 23 years in his first year of medical school, in 2011, my son graduated as a medical doctor. He did this with his wife and children at his side. Today, he serves the northern communities of northern Ontario. The Oje Cree love him. My husband started medical school the day we buried our second newborn. Our third grandchild, our daughter, was born five months just before his medical graduation. In 2017, she received her doctorate at this very stage, her five-month-old in her arms, and he's here today. I've listened <clears throat> as they took pride in their marks, watched them cram, wrestle, struggle, and squirm at an approaching deadline or an exam. I have been frustrated along with them as life dealt difficult challenges. I've had to stand real still and not interfere. Non-interference is a teacher that leaves so many parents in conflict. Yet interference can handicap the decision-making that is necessary for learning about consequences and responsibility. <clears throat> yet, 
Years ago, I took satellite classes in Meadow Lake, and then I commuted in 30 below weather from there to the University of Saskatchewan. I take one class in the evening and one class in the morning, then I'd head home. My family knows what sacrifice means. We know the meaning to blood, sweat, and tears, and to work your ass off. This work and your work took dedication, determination, endurance, perseverance, risk taken, belief, and courage. In three words, it's about choice, self-respect, and faith all carried out, acted on, and bundled with love. However, none of us have walked and worked this process alone. Along the sidelines and behind you is your family, <clears throat> your confidants, your mentors, your professors. Today, they swell with pride. Don't forget to say thank you a zillion times. It's 3 a.m., 5, 6 a.m. I listen to the stillness. There is a silence only the heart can hear. This is the voice I listen to. It wakes me up to deliver my work as a writer. Hence, I wrote this repeatedly. Like an insecure adolescent, I ran about asking my favorite critics, is this okay? I came away frustrated, angry, jubilated as I gathered this research. I was desperate for validation. I had forgotten the teachings of my elders and ceremony. It's up to you. I created these medicines, this bundle for your synapses and your neurons to absorb and to digest. Today, You've earned your warrior's bonnet, and it is a very proud moment. The elders, these ancient warriors who circle the heavens, are at this moment holding a, a dance. They are drumming, singing, and stomping in celebration of you. In Cree, student means the need to learn from a sacred place. Hence, as we study, we are not, we not only encourage, but literally sting and trick ourselves into learning. The student takes it, takes it upon him or herself to think from their center. This is a spiritual journey to find our origin. Miska Suwin. This implies we must learn to function with atzak, soul and spirit. Manitou, the creator, lives in all of us. The university hallways have been worn down by our moccasins, high heels, work boots, and sneakers. While we carried forth this wapatuin, the seeing, mastication, digestion and regurgitation of all our voices and our visions. In our Muskinut Muskihi, our medicine bundles, we carry on our cultural traditions which have been passed on for generations. All this Bemutdewin, the heart walk, is propelled and guided by Yuthin, the wind. However, like the bear, we need to hibernate briefly, to think and regroup quietly. Our medicines, maskikia, the things that our spirit holds, knows, merges, and sustains. Even though we often doubt their ability to carry us onward. In essence, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, literally, and metaphorically live in us. They are within the medicine bundles that which we have been co collecting, carrying and demonstrating to ourselves, to our communities, to the institutes from which we are graduating. 
To embark on any journey, we need to pepper our life with resourcefulness. We need to know how to solve problems. We need to take leadership. The Divine Parent, Mama Wehtawino, guides all of us. The student has an innate sense of responsibility, adventure, and to search for meaning. In the process of our, of our strength, <clears throat> the search to satisfy our curiosity, all kinds of funny and crazy and, and surprising events occur. The path to self-actualization can and will take many meskanoa, these roads. The warriors are never the same. This is the light of being the seeker. For the eye has a big vision and the heavens are endless. However, we need guides. Reaching into our medicine bundles, our grandparents are prepared to go into battle. So one of our medicines which stands us in good form is agamemo, and to endure and to, to persevere. This walk has demanded from the student inspiration and disciplined conduct. The challenges are big and small, difficult and at times easy. Yet we have not been alone, though many times that is the feeling. We must walk hand in hand with Wagutuin, the laws that govern all relations. So we dig into our bundles, gather the roots, ingest them, and invite them to live. They tell us we must we, get along with others and live in harmony. The old ones have gifted us faith in believing. When we are in doubt, someone somewhere believes in us. The, the boagan, the dream, the atayugan, the spear guardian, arrives in as a dream, drums, jumps from, the pa from a passage that we've read in a book, a word, a stranger's insight, or the empathetic ear of a, of, of a professor, but they arrive. A professor who is charged, enlightened, and compassionate takes an interest in their pupils and transforms his or her audience. It is, if, it is, if, it is if, as if they arrive through the old ones, the spirited people. They have the banquet of Giswatutatuin, kindness, Sipetamuin, patience, Dimangituin, respect, Sagituin, love, and Puneitamuin, forgiveness. They know when to take us out to Starbucks, to a football game, or pour us tea and help us find someone to lay our hands on. They become like trees swaying with the wind, breathing life to one another. They also know when to leave us be. They are wise and understanding, wakutun, about relationship. Since the day we were born, we have been students, literally and metaphorically, on a vision quest. At each hill of life, we've achieved and accomplished a goal. Slowly, vision and realization took shape. This shape-shifting has gone through many trans transitions which we still define and redefine. Nonetheless, the vision remains a sacred promise we've made to the Creator and to ourselves. For every choice we make, the elders teach, it's up to you. Hence, the answers come from within, and with this choice we accept responsibility. This literally translates to the act of looking after something. It's caretaking. Unlike, unlike the actual vision quest, you've had the, the luxury of food and water and the comfort of mattress and friends. But as a student, you've already met your shadows. It's how you deal with them that counts. 
You must apply what you've learned or choose to shrivel mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Our spirits need to stretch, bend, explore, and expand its wings. It needs to be nurtured. This walk, this journey does not stop here. Knowledge wants and needs to be applied. I have some basic questions that one needs to ask oneself. What do I need to do to be a better practitioner to, save, to serve others? These gifts I have learned, how do I give them away without disempowering the people I wish to serve? Recently, my husband wrote, healing, <clears throat> healing is the work of the heart. The healer needs to touch and know their own heart in order to reach in and touch the other. Healing is the drawing out. The people heal themselves. One can be cured but not healed, and one can heal without being cured. A cure can be conferred. Healing from within, but both need to be nurtured. The elders teach us the biggest, most important battle takes place within. Hence, I put this continuous challenge of going within to quarrel with your soul and to know deeply without finching your truth. This is, I believe, is where the greatest vision quest occurs. And so we shall step up, walk our talk, with a sense of accomplishment and pride and allow humility to guide our, to be our guide. Accept this challenge to make change and leave the blessings to all future generations. We cannot afford to waste another minute. Blessed be that then your willingness to spread your wings and take flight. Exupitama, all my relations. Ay, ay. Thank you. Eminent Chancellor, Mr. President, members of the University Senate and Board, I present to you the petition of the Council of this University that the candidates to be named, having fulfilled all the requirements of the bylaws, may with your permission be admitted to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates to which they are entitled. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the legislature of this province, and with the consent of the council of this university, I consent to admit you to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates to which you are entitled, and to vest you with all the powers, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto. I have some instructions now for the graduands. In a moment, I'll be asking the first row on this side of the auditorium to proceed to the platform. Uh, once you reach the platform, if you could turn and face the audience and a hood will be put over your shoulders, you can then walk to the podium on that side of the platform where an orator will announce your name and this is the important part. You have to stop and say hello to the chancellor and see if he'll grant you your degree. <laughs> Hope it goes well. 
You can then proceed across the platform where you'll be met by the president and then go on to shake the hand of your dean or associate dean who will give you your parchment. There will be a photograph taken of you with the dean or associate dean. Then you can proceed down the ramp on this side. Uh, there's another opportunity to have a photo taken behind the platform and someone will direct you how to return to your seat. So if the first row on this side could proceed to the platform. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the faculty of the College of, Kings, College of Kinesiology, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology. I present to you Alicia Megan Abernethy. Rachel McKenzie Pearl Adams with distinction. <laughs> Muhammad Razig Alizadeh with distinction. <laughs> Lexus Robin Amson. Brianna Ray Antonichuk with great distinction. <laughs> Melinda Adag with great distinction. <laughs> Ashley Rabers. <laughs> Corey Robert Blushki with honors and great distinction. Amy Nicole Boyle with great distinction. <laughs> Cassidy Marielle Boyle with distinction. <laughs> Carling Mary Jane Bradley with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Lee Brand. Sean Kate William Brand with grand distinction. <laughs> Haley Norma Zane Brown with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Mercedes Winter by with distinction. Madison Dana Campbell with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Mitchell Christopher Kennedy with great distinction. <laughs> Lillian Galermo Canlas with distinction. Lauren Hannah Michelle Cave. <laughs> Matthew Scott Chapelsky with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Jordan Lynn Colburn with great distinction. <laughs> Madison Croshaw with great distinction. Adam Glenn Curry. <laughs> Mar 
Mark Gordon Diakiu. Diego Diaz, with great distinction. <laughs> Brittany Anna Duville, with great distinction. <laughs> Alexandra Jane, with great distinction. Eric David with great distinction. <laughs> Rebecca Frederick. <laughs> Blake Hanna. Catherine Elizabeth Harrison, with great distinction. <laughs> Bethany Dawn Hayes, with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Hannah Mary Hazler, with distinction. <laughs> Chloe Patricia Ireland, with great distinction. Christine Ann Jonathan with distinction. <laughs> Tatiana Elizabeth Jashut with distinction. <laughs> Courtney Annelise Klassen with great distinction. <laughs> Amy Francis Konechik with Great distinction. <laughs> Julia Coop with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Kylie with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Alexa Ivanka with great distinction. Nicole Dawn Laird with great distinction. <laughs> Catherine Mary Latoski with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Sami Leung with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Ashley Brian Lipke with honors and great distinction. Kevin Alexander Lowen with great distinction. <laughs> Casey Charles Robert Marchinki with great distinction. <laughs> Taylor Jade McGregor with great distinction. <laughs> Lindsay Ray McInnes with honors and distinction. Megan Erica MacLeod with distinction. <laughs> Dallas Mingle with distinction. <laughs> Jory Mayer with great distinction. Logan Dale Michael Shen with great distinction. <laughs> Bailey Ann with distinction. <laughs> Brand Alexander Milk Shackney. <laughs> Natasha Ann Miskavish with Distinction. <laughs> Brittany, 
Brandon Michel Newdorf, with great distinction. <laughs> Rebecca Ray Newson. <laughs> Card Jane Oriel, with distinction. <laughs> Valeria Osipenko with distinction. <laughs> James Felix of Senec with great distinction. <laughs> Brandon Thomas Plant with great distinction. <laughs> Lisa Colleen Prodhal with distinction. Catherine Rolick with honors and great distinction. <laughs> Rin Mary Range. <laughs> Daniel Lewis Robin with great distinction. Kendra Miranda Robinson with distinction. <laughs> Erika Lynn Sakari. <laughs> Alexandra Schell with great distinction. Andrew Sherke with great distinction. <laughs> Megan Alexandra Smith with distinction. <laughs> Michael Eric Sofilas with great distinction. Hannah Faith Solid with great distinction. <laughs> Jaden Rachel Stereki with great distinction. <laughs> Anika Joy with honors and great distinction. Daniel Van de Karkov with great distinction. <laughs> Dean Ashok Vishwanathan with great distinction. <laughs> Madison Lynn Williams with honors and distinction. Heather Brooke Wood with great distinction. <laughs> Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, I present to you these scholars from the College of Kinesiology and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Master of Science. I present to you Shara Rashida Johnson. <laughs> Jong Bam Ko. <laughs> Mackenzie Grace Marchant. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of the College of Medicine, I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Doctor of Medicine. I present to you Sanji Ahmed Ali. <laughs> Stephanie Dale Ardell. Marilyn Angela Beaulieu. <laughs> Dr. 
Jacqueline Carverhill. Hafsa Chalchan. Jordan Clark. Tyler Bennett Davis. Kevin Manuel Der. Katy Mary Elliott. Jared Galloway. Matthew, Matthew Gazelf. <laughs> Lauren Adela Gillespie. <laughs> Sareni Mohandira Ngi Gomez. <laughs> Bruno Baptista. Sebastio. <laughs> Olivia Ann Griffin. <laughs> Brandon James Groat. <laughs> Andrea Fee Gibbard. Rachel Go, Tahiri Hazi, Laura Jane Halik, Emmett Pierce Harrison. Thea Lynn Handyman. York Ming Huang. James Im. Ali Zamal. Kristen Zivit, <laughs> Kara N. Zodwin, <laughs> Kirk Douglas Jones, <laughs> Kieran Johnson. Mandeep Carr Kaler. <laughs> Susanna Jean Keller. <laughs> Jeffrey Michael Kendall. <laughs> Jennifer Christy Nibbs. Annalise Tatiana Kudruk. Tracy May Leach. Brooke Lindsay Letty. Haisun Lee. Sydney Ann Lee. <laughs> Alex Lay.
Austin James Little. Jessica Caitlin Littman. Bonnie Liu. Kiefer Dwight Lipka. Jennifer Audrey Mann. Kristen Danielle Marsenuk. Ava Tasia McDonald. Megan Olivia McDonald. Brigitte Ann Mary McFadden. Susan Kathleen McClellan. Armin Moradi Nogabi. Anton I. Moshinsky. Ron Nguyen. Dana Aaron Nielsen. Tatiana Tubi Sally. Preston Stanley O'Brien. Oluwatosan Ayobami Odeshi. Oluwandera Emmanuel Anasanya. <laughs> Kyle Joseph Payne Show. Evan Brody Payet. Muhammad Tala Raj. <laughs> Jessica Aaron Reiniger. <laughs> Samantha Lauren Robinson. Mark Wayne Roger. <laughs> Catherine Ann Ross Hotley. Shona Kathleen Bapti Rummels. Jacob Yaji Sawa. Michael John Shinold. John Paul Schulte.
Matthew David Schultz. Izan Ula Shahab. Emily Lauren Sims. Chitbanu Singh. Cody Rope Smith. Shamir S. Sohail. Pulak Suriwanshi. Alicia Thatcher. Jasmine Opal. Brigitte Vondovitz. Stephen West. Rebecca Aaron Whaley. Brian Paul Wojtowicz. Henry Shea. Yetong Zhu. Caitlin Marie Yeager. Spencer Stephen Zvorich. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the faculty of the Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, I present to you these scholars from the College of Medicine and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Master of Science. I present to you Pujwa Biswa. Tyson Blaine Follick. Carolyn Gaspar. Heiji J. Kim. Kaylee Jean Knudsen. Rachel Ann Malina Chan. Andrea Vasquez Carnego. Eminent Chancellor. On behalf of the faculty of the College of Pharmacy and Nutrition, 
I present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nutrition. I present to you James Andrew Bain. Stephanie Rochelle Lessa Behrman. Rebecca Corrine Blackburn. Hannah Frances Derboca. Leah Oksana Fedek. <laughs> Hallie Catherine Forbes. <laughs> Emily Ruth Gage, with great distinction. Hira Ghani. Crystal Hebert, with distinction. Rebecca Aaron Krieger. Brianna Elizabeth Mills, with distinction. <laughs> Brooke Mariah Motovello, with great distinction. <laughs> Mandy Jessica Olson. Sarah Ann Patnode, with distinction. Woo! Robin Leanna Price, with great distinction. Woo! Sin Yu Shen, with great, with distinction. Chansey Town, with distinction. Anna Marie Tatarin. Melissa Jacine Vollmer. Grace Ina Weishaupt. Paige Madeline Wyatt. Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Pharmacy and Nutrition, I will present to you these scholars and ask that you will confer on them the degree of Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy. I present to you Sarah Abul Hassani, with great distinction. <laughs> Dr. Alazawi. Zuhaib Emerez. <laughs> S 
Stephen Robert Anderson. John Mike Elias Andreos, with distinction. Kristen Catherine Arguin. Jada Marie Baker. Kelsey Alexandra Balog, with distinction. Alexander Baran, with great distinction. Hisham Bimji, with distinction. Brianna Claire Binsfeld. Dana Melissa Black. Alida Cree Boulian. Alexandra Page Britton, with great distinction. Kristen Nicole Burroughs. Monique Renee Cadrain. Sarah Emma Cooper, with great distinction. Katrina Lee Curry, with great distinction. Avery Dawn Diekert, with distinction. Daniel Zahn Ding. Jonathan Aaron DeRoos. Jenna Duan Young Fan. Ruth Ifeolua Ayatamidi Fayomi. Ryan William Flyshucker with distinction. Brittany Celine Gessner with distinction. Taylor Marie Gilliland with distinction. <laughs> Justine Alona Hagee. <laughs> Dylan Jeffrey Hope. Kyle Stephen Hudock with distinction. <laughs> Sydney Elan Hubner. <laughs> S 
Sodik Poleambo Ibrahim. Allison Louise Ingram. Cassandra Lynn Isinger. Alicia Lynn Jensen, with great distinction. Brandon Paul Stephen Kennedy. Erica Dawn King. Caitlin Mackenzie Cron, with great distinction. Jessica Lynn Kubashak. Shanoa Dawn Queens. Vicki Law. Shelley Ann Lair. Krista Marie Levishak. Hannah Christy Littman. Jonathan Peter Llewellyn Williams. Jocelyn Brianne Martin. Natasha Lynn McIntyre. Sheo Meng. Courtney Helen Mish. Dennis Duke Dewey Nguyen. Bobby Nicolat with distinction. Amarjot Singh Pandur. Kyla Ricky Phillips. Alicia Megan Potvin with distinction. Lindy Virginia Prentice with distinction. David G. Q. Darren Keith Rethmeyer. Megan Elizabeth Reeder. Jennifer Diane Rousen.
Tara, Catherine, Russo. Carrie Lynn Rustad, with great distinction. <laughs> Callie Safna. <laughs> Brooklyn Alyssa Scott. Sahil Sharma. Marshall Lane Siemens with distinction. Caitlin Lorraine Steeney. Morgan Raylynn Stevens with distinction. <laughs> Haley Renee Sukun. <laughs> Jeffrey Osborne Sweatman. Michael William Gerald Theaker with distinction. Lisa Lily Toy with great distinction. Shivani Milish Trivedi. Trivedi, Trivedi, they are sorry. Shivani Melish Trivedi. Sakina Wajahat. <laughs> Kayla Brianne Wharton. Caitlin Naomi Wilcox. Calvin Yee with distinction. Evan Douglas Ewell with great distinction. Justine Zabereschuk. <laughs> Catherine Young. <laughs> Eminent Chancellor. On behalf of the Faculty of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, I present to you these scholars from the College of Pharmacy and Nutrition, and I ask that you will confer on them the degree of Master of Science. I present to you Rasha Omar al Hassidi. <laughs> Chukwunanso Kingsley. Noabufo. Sandra Elizabeth Rosero Tapia. Sharman Sultana Sumi.
Eminent Chancellor, on behalf of the Faculty of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies, I present to you these scholars, and I ask that you will confer on them the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. I present to you, Masha Abershami. <laughs> Felina Sampath Bandera. Tracy Lynn Danilishan Lakar. Sarah Lorraine Finch. He what a baby Hillasalasi. Zainab Hassani. <laughs> Kyra Janine Kane. <laughs> Abeyomi Tulawaju Olenii. Kosar Omidian. Kosar Omidian. And last but not least for this morning, Isaac Vorster Pratt. Please join me in congratulating these graduates on their certificates, diplomas, and degrees. Eminent Chancellor, in the name of the faculties, I ask you to grant the degrees, diplomas, and certificates in absentia to those students who have met the requirements to graduate but were not able to be present today. At the request of the faculties, I authorize these degrees, diplomas, and certificates to be granted. I'll call forward Chad London, Dean of the College of Kinesiology. Eminent Chancellor, President Stoichev, honored guests, faculty, graduates, family, and friends, it is my pleasure on behalf of the faculty of the College of Kinesiology to present to you Ms. Kylie Kozakowski as this year's recipient of the Dr. Gordon Garvey Prize. <laughs> this prize is awarded to the College of Kinesiology's most outstanding graduate, specifically that student who demonstrates outstanding academic performance, a commitment to volunteer and community service, campus involvement, and leadership in the college and university community. As this year's recipient, Ms. Kosakowski has demonstrated herself to be an outstanding scholar, leader, and role model who embodies the values that we hold dearly in the college. It is our mission to lead and inspire movement, help, and performance. And this is what Kylie does. This is who Kylie is. 
Through the course of her studies, she has continuously made a difference on campus, within the college and throughout the community. Her history of volunteering speaks for itself. She continually represents um, the ability to support and encourage others in adopting an active and healthy lifestyle. She's been a dedicated volunteer within our PAL program, which is a program focusing on enabling children and youth to overcome barriers and take the opportunity to experience the joys of physical activity. She also volunteers with our children's activity camps and the Children's Healthy Heart Camp in Saskatchewan program. On campus and in her community, Kylie volunteered with the Five Days for the Homeless campaign. She coached at both Flip Gymnastics and a high school basketball team at Tommy Douglas Collegiate and was an exceptional volunteer at the Ronald McDonald House for Sick Children receiving medical treatment in Saskatoon. To give you a sense of the impact she has made in these volunteer pursuits, I received a note from Tommy Douglas Collegiate describing Kylie's contributions there, and I couldn't have said it any better myself, and so I'm gonna read what they sent me. Quote, as the coach of our boys basketball team, Kylie was always extremely organized and very professional with our students. Her wealth of knowledge and her coaching style helped the team make huge improvements throughout the course of the year even though she had them practicing mostly at 7.15 a.m. Get, getting a group of 14 and 15 year old boys up that early and listening to her coaching and getting them to work as hard as they did is, was no small feat. I wanted to make sure that you were aware of the tremendous commitment, work ethic, and leadership that she displayed while coaching our team. You should be very proud of how Kylie represented the University of Saskatchewan and the College of Kinesiology. Close quote, and we are very proud of Kylie. In the midst of all of those dedicated volunteer hours and the commitment to her community, she has maintained an outstanding academic record as well. Being named to the academic honor roll, she graduates today with an honors degree with great distinction in kinesiology, a testament to her remarkable dedication to achieving academic success while giving back to the community on and off campus. And she's not going far in the fall. She will begin a new journey at the University of Saskatchewan in the College of Medicine. So please join me in congratulating Ms. Kylie Kozakowski, the College of Kinesiology's 2019 recipient of the Dr. Dr. Gordon Garvey Prize as the most outstanding graduate. Eminent Chancellor, President Choyschaf, faculty, graduates, family and friends. It's my pleasure to present to you the recipient of the College of Medicine's Lindsay Gold Medal, Shamir Sohail. And it's certainly my, my pleasure to tell you a little bit about Shamir. Born in Pakistan, he immigrated to Toronto with his father and his mother, who was a physician in Pakistan when he was seven years old. He attended McGill University to obtain a degree in neuroscience, which he achieved with first class distinction in 2015. His goal was getting into medical school. And while working a full-time job with a three hour round trip daily commute, Shamir studied for and wrote the Medical College of Admission Tests, or the MCAT. He joined our College of Medicine as a first year medical student in August of 2015. Shamir's list of achievements are extensive. I will highlight some of them here. A long list of scholarships, including scholarships each year for being at the top of his medical school class in 2016, 2017, and 2018. Three University of Saskatchewan scholarships at the same time. Successful work in research recognized by a first place research poster award in 2013 from Toronto's Sunnybrook Research Institute. A Canadian Stroke Network Award for a research proposal in 2014. Multiple projects as a research associate at the Toronto Sunnybrook Health Sciences Centre. And 
in his spare time, excellence in powerlifting, including multiple competitions for the past 10 years. Didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> a 2013 Canadian Powerlifting Federation record in bench press, mentoring and coaching youth. In addition to all that, Shamir developed extensive computer programming skills that he's utilized in his research products, projects. And he is fluent in four languages, English, Urdu, Hindi, and Punjabi. When Shamir started medical school, he thought he would become a neurologist. Uh, like many of his colleagues, he changed his mind and he has decided to instead pursue in, in internal medicine. He attributes his choice in his words, the world-class mentors and attending physicians that I had here at the U of S Department of Medicine. Please join me in acknowledging the College of Medicine, Lindsay Gold Medicine medalist, Shamir Sohail. Good morning, Your Honor, Eminent Chancellor, Mr. President, platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Brooke Motovello. <laughs> the Rudder Medal, given in honor and memory of, the, of Professor Emeritus Ethel Rudder, is awarded to the most distinguished graduate in nutrition, recognizing both scholarship and leadership. The recipient of the Rudder Medal for 2019 is Brooke Motovell. Brooke grew up in Calgary, Alberta and received her first undergraduate degree in biological sciences with a minor in psychology from the University of Alberta. Brooke moved to Saskatoon upon acceptance into the College of Pharmacy and Nutrition in 2015. Brooke has been an outstanding student in all years of her program. She's received numerous scholarships and awards and today she receives her degree with great distinction. In 2018, Brooke was a successful applicant of the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship and was able to travel to Uganda, Africa for three months along with nine other health sciences students in accordance with the One Health Initiative. During her practicum year, Brooke was able to pursue her interest of pediatric clinical nutrition as well as experience the role of dietitians within the northern community. She is also excited to continue her interest in international travel as a winner of the Hannon Travel Scholarship, where she'll be traveling to New Zealand in 2020. I'm envious. <laughs> Brooke, Brooke would like to thank everyone at the University of Saskatchewan and at the College of Pharmacy and Nutrition for making all these opportunities possible and for allowing her to pursue areas of interest, both in academics and by means of experiential learning. I am sure her parents, Harvey and Lorraine, brother Jaden, and her Saskatoon family, Morgan, Shelley, and Curtis, are particularly proud of her academic accomplishments, as we certainly are. Congratulations, Brooke. Thank you. <laughs> I'll repeat myself again. Your Honour, <laughs> Eminent Chancellor, Mr. President, platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Lisa Lily Toy. <laughs> the 2019 recipient of the Robert Martin Prize, awarded annually to the most distinguished graduate in the Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy, degree program is Lisa Toy. This award is provided by the Saskatchewan College of Pharmacy Professionals in honor of the late Robert Martin, a pioneer pharmacist in Western Canada and the first registrar of both the Northwest Territories Pharmaceutical Association and the Saskatchewan Pharmaceutical Association. Lisa also receives the Saskatchewan College of Pharmacy Professionals Gold Medal, which is awarded annually to the most distinguished pharmacy graduate. Lisa grew up in Nippon, Saskatchewan, where she had her first experience in health care, working as a care aide. 
She, she chose to pursue the profession of pharmacy because of the unique role that pharmacists play in helping patients understand their health and medications. Although the first pharmacist in the family, Lisa shares her love of health care with her mom, a licensed practical nurse, and her brother, a registered nurse. As a Canadian-born Chinese, Lisa also has a special passion for assisting minority populations with overcoming barriers to navigating the health care system and empowering them to have an active role in their own health care. In Saskatoon, Lisa enjoys taking aerial silks classes and studying Chinese. Her future aspirations include being fluent in Mandarin and traveling throughout Taiwan. Again, I'm envious. <laughs> Lisa has been the recipient of numerous scholarships and awards both at the college and university level, recognizing her academic excellence. Lisa is receiving the Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy degree with great distinction today, and she would like to extend a special thank you to her mom and dad, her brother Keeley, pharmacy friends Dana Black, Jenna Fan, Michelle Mang, David Key, Marshall Siemens, Morgan Stevens, and Calvin Yi. And last but not least, the faculty and staff of the College of Pharmacy and Nutrition, with special mention to Donna Mikashu and Claire Sutton for their undying support throughout her academic career. Lisa will be working as a pharmacist at Royal University Hospital in Saskatoon. I'm sure her friends and family are particularly proud of her academic accomplishments, as we certainly are. Congratulations, Lisa. So I would like to add my congratulations to all of you for the uh, accomplishments that are reflected in the receipt of all of your degrees today. Uh, you are joining a community of over 155,000 graduates of the University of Saskatchewan around the world. And the Alumni Association has sent you a message in the form of a video, so I would direct your attention to the screens. Also, on behalf of the Alumni Association, I would like to invite you and your guests to a reception which will be held immediately following the ceremony in Convocation Hall across the street. I'd like now to call on Chancellor Roy Romano to make some concluding remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Beth. Mr. President, distinguished platform guests, um, graduates, this brings our convocation ceremony to a close, but before we do, I would like to thank a number of people, our vocalist Kate Nachalobi, 
our drum group, the Buffalo Boy Production, our elder, Roland Duquette, our signer, Dean Weeb, and of course, the teams from the Convocation Office of the Office of the University Secretary, the office that Beth leads, all of whom play an important role in making these ceremonies such a great success. Um, I want to acknowledge right at the very beginning the outstanding leadership of our president, Peter Stoichev, of this university, uh, one of the best, I would say the best in Canada. He'll be embarrassed and ball me out after I've said this, but certainly one of the best presidents of, of anywhere in Canada. Uh, his leadership has been exceptional and his... <laughs> Now, the applause prevents you from bawling me out afterwards. <laughs> His leadership has been exceptional. And I also want to welcome our new chancellor, Grit McCreeth, who will bring the passion and the excitement and the support for the university, which is always a very important role, amongst others, for the chancellor. Finally, now to the graduates, I simply say this. You have studied hard to earn your degree and wish you continued success, all of us do, throughout your lives, both personally and professionally. Well done. It's my personal hope that thanks to your precious experience here, your education has prepared you to meet some of the challenges in the world, how to heal an injured child, how to make art that transforms people's perspectives, how to protect the human right, how to write a poem that explains the feeling of loss or joy, how to deploy capital to produce and market new products, and how to ensure that food production demands are met for the world, and many more. You could sum up all this by saying how to design and work for the just state. Earning your degree, graduates, will show you value for a lifetime to come. I can attest to that. And the education you have received from the University of Saskatchewan has prepared you to meet these challenges head on. So I say, follow your dreams because that's where you will find your true passion. And in the end, that's what we want for each and every one of the graduates of this great university, the University of Saskatchewan. God bless.